All right. So this is the webinar on alternate electronic visit verification certification, specifically on the ALT EVV certification process and some recent changes that have gone into effect with that certification process. Before we get started today, we want to do a quick sound test. So we are testing sound at this time. For anybody who can hear my voice, fantastic. Hopefully anybody who's logged into the webinar but is not currently hearing audio will see on the slide that they should be at this time. And it's an indication to them and also everyone on the line that the place where you will find this webinar posting at a later time is on Medicaid's EDV webpage. Specifically, it will be posted under the alternate system tab. Also, if there are questions at any time throughout today's webinar, all attendees have been put on mute for audio quality. So to ask a question, you can select the Q&A or question and answer icon that shows up in the webinar bar. And that will make a box appear where you can type in your question. Your instructor and the EDV team will answer as many questions as possible during the time allotted at the end of the webinar. And one final housekeeping item for today, you may click the enter full screen button in the webinar window at any time during the presentation if you would like to make it larger on your screen. To get back to the window where the Q&A box displays, or in other words, to make that webinar window smaller on your screen, you may just hover over the top middle of your screen, and that will make the webinar bar appear. Then you may click View Options, and finally exit full screen. The agenda for today's webinar is to go over what is an alternate EDV system and who is eligible for it. We'll review important information and resources for alternate EDV certification. We'll review what the process is to certify an alternate EDV system. And we'll review recent changes to the alternate EDV certification process. We'll begin with what is an alternate EDV system. The Ohio Department of Medicaid provides an EDV system free of charge through Sandata Technologies uh, to all providers who would need to use it. An ALT EDV system is a different or alternate system other than Sandata's EDV system that also captures the required information for the ODM EDV program. Agency providers may choose to use an ALT EDV system for capturing the required EDV data. At this time, only agency providers may choose to use an alternate EDV system. Next, we'll review the ALT EDV uh, information to be sure that you know about and review, so important information, and what resources are available to view that information. The key source of information for both providers and vendors who wish to pursue an alternate system is the ODM EDV webpage, and the link is currently posted on this slide. And on that web page, there is an alternate system tab. And this is specifically where all things Alt-EDV would be housed. So that's information for both vendors and providers. It is the greatest resource of information that is out there for Alt-EDV at this time. All Alt-EDV documentation that is housed on that alternate system tab is important. But there are a few things that we'll be calling out today. Uh, two of those items are called out in the screenshot on this screen, and they have arrows pointing to them, in fact. And that is because providers using an alternate EDV system must meet all of the requirements in both the business requirements and technical specifications documents that are posted to the alternate system tab. Now, if you were to open those documents, specifically the business requirements, there are some requirements that are especially important to note. First, ODM and Sandata are not responsible for any costs related to setting up an interface with or implementing an ALT EDV system. 
agencies must be the ones to initiate the all EBV setup process, request testing credentials, and request production credentials. An all EBV system must complete the setup and certification process for each agency's Medicaid provider ID with whom they contract. How often an all EBV system sends data to the SAN data aggregator is up to the all EBV system or vendor, but it must be within 24 hours of data collection and or any edits are made to data. So let's say a visit is captured in an alternate system and that visit is edited in 10 days. Within 24 hours of that edit, that edited information must be sent to the SAN data aggregator. Next, voice and or digital signatures must be obtained and stored in the alt EBV system of record, but they do not need to be sent to the SAN data aggregator, but they must be captured and stored in the alternate EBV system. And indication that verification was or was not captured on a visit must be sent to the SAN data aggregator. So that must be certain to be sent through. Now there are some additional requirements to note that have specific effective dates. So requirements to note as of January 1st of 2019. All EDV systems must use mobile GPS technology to collect GPS coordinates in near real time at the start and end of the visit as the primary method of data collection. Also, as of January 1st, 2019, all EVV systems must offer at least two backup methods of visit capture, and manual entry must be one of those methods. There is an additional requirement to note that is effective as of October 21st of 2019. So that is effective as of yesterday, today is the 22nd. A successful Alt-EDV system demonstration must be completed with the Ohio Department of Medicaid in order to be considered certified. And as that is the newest requirement, we're going to go into additional details on that requirement now. An alternate EBV system demonstration is a demonstration by an alt EBV system vendor where the vendor demonstrates that the system has core functionality required by ODM. It is not intended to determine the usability of the alternate system. It also does not result in any kind of endorsement by ODM of the alternate system. And finally, a successful demonstration does not guarantee certification of the alternate system. The um, SAN data process also needs to be completed successfully before certification will be awarded. Why, are we, why a demo? Um, the SAN data process that we've been using since we began our EBV initiative in Ohio focuses solely on the vendor's ability to send information and not on requirements regarding the capture of that information. The demonstration will help providers make sure they are in compliance with program requirements. During the recent rule revisions, we did receive comments from um, providers indicating that they were uncomfortable being solely responsible for making sure all the program requirements were satisfied by their alternate systems. In addition, the demonstration will help vendors be sure they are offering their clients all the required functionality. And finally, the demonstration helps ODM be sure that the information sent to the aggregator by alternate systems was captured appropriately. This is to address um, circumstances that have been identified since we first began certifying alternate systems where vendors were submitting information that was collected without or allegedly collected without the appropriate functionality behind the data transmission. Who is required to complete a demonstration? Anyone currently in the process of certifying their alternate system or who subsequently begins certification of their alternate system will be required to complete a demo. They can schedule that demonstration at any time after completing aggregator training. 
the demonstration has to be completed successfully before the system will be certified and production credentials will be issued. In addition, providers and vendors currently using a certified alternate system will be required to successfully complete a demonstration. These providers should schedule an alternate system demonstration by November 15, 2019. If an alternate system that is currently in use does not successfully complete the demonstration, the vendor and provider will be given a reasonable amount of time to come into compliance and schedule a second demonstration. A failure to schedule a demonstration or to successfully complete the demonstration may lead to decertification of the alternate system. To request a demonstration, the provider should complete the request to schedule demonstration form found on the ODM EBB webpage. Um, you will receive a confirmed date and time for the demonstration in response within two business days of submitting the request. The vendor will receive a copy of the response with the confirmed date and time. Note that the form asks for the first date when the provider and vendor will be available to complete the demonstration. The demonstration will not be scheduled before the date provided. However, depending on availability of demonstration slots, it may be scheduled for a date after the date requested. Currently, demonstrations are being scheduled on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If a vendor has already completed the demonstration successfully the, with another provider, the provider and vendor can complete part two of the request to schedule demonstration form. Both the provider and the vendor must sign the form before submitting it to ODM. A completing this portion of the form and submitting it when we can verify that a successful demonstration was completed previously will um, meet the demonstration requirement. If an alternate system is offered in multiple forms, however, each platform must be demonstrated once. Examples of solutions provided in multiple forms include, but are not limited to, a solution that is housed on the vendor server but also sold to providers to be housed on their own servers, or a vendor that offers a DODD-only solution and a solution for other payers. The demonstration um, requires that the alternate system vendor participate in person. The provider must participate either in person or remotely. ODM staff will participate in the demonstration, and a SAN data resource will be available in the event there are technical questions during the demonstration. The demonstration will cover four functional areas, creating employee records, creating client records, capturing visit data, and visit maintenance. The provider must successfully demonstrate each item on the demonstration checklist found on the ODM website. Note that one task, for example, capturing a visit, may clear multiple items on the checklist. In addition, it's important to note that the checklist is a valuable tool for providers considering alternate systems as they make their contracting decisions. After the demonstration is complete, ODM will send the provider a letter by email with the results of the demonstration in a copy of the completed checklist within three business days. The vendor and SAN data will both receive a copy of the email. 
If the demonstration is not completed successfully, the vendor can schedule a second demonstration after system updates are completed. Okay, so as we mentioned before, your key resource for the demo checklist that was just mentioned, for the form that requests to schedule a demonstration, um, everything involving the demonstration requirement, all of that is posted to the alternate system tab of the ODM EDV webpage. And there is also additional key certification information that you would find on that alternate system tab of the web page. Documents that are referenced in the technical specifications and business requirements, for instance, are also housed on that tab. And these documents include the exception codes, the exception code listing, the reason code listing, and the required data elements that are mentioned in the technical specifications and the business requirements. It's important to read these documents and ensure that an alternate EDV system is complying with them as well as the business requirements and the technical specifications. A quick note about the exceptions and the reason code document that we just mentioned. The SAN data aggregator is a read-only view of alternate EDV data that is sent to SAN data. So providers cannot resolve exceptions or add reason codes for any missing information on the visit directly in the SAN data aggregator. Rather, alternate EDV systems must provide a way to resolve those exceptions, edit visits, and manually enter new visits in the alternate system itself. For example, if we take a look at the alternate EDV data that's available to be seen in the SAN data aggregator, it would look like what's currently on the screen. So if you'll notice that the top screenshot on this screen currently shows two visits. One visit has red dots indicating missing required data on the visit, and so that visit has a status of incomplete. And the second visit in the top screenshot does not contain any red dots or exceptions, and it currently has a status of verified, which indicates that it does have all of the required information for that visit. When it comes to claims validation for a provider who submits claims for EDV eligible services to ODM, the verified visits or those that are complete and have all of the information are the ones that will be eligible to be seen in claims validation. And those that are incomplete or are missing required data elements uh, would not be able to be seen in claims validation. Now, if a provider was to click on one of these visits in the SAN data aggregator, they would see what you see in the bottom screenshot of this screen. They would be able to click on each tab that's listed here, client, employee, exceptions, uh, and see the information for the visit, but they would not actually be able to add information or change information. So for instance, and here we have a red call out pointing out those red dots that I just mentioned. And you'll notice that because of this incomplete visit, and I just want to point this out before we move on, since there's no call out for this visit, units cannot be calculated for this visit, uh, which is also another reason why it would not be eligible for claims validation because it doesn't have the information necessary just yet in order for ODM to compare a claim to the EDB data. Now, if we were to click on the exceptions tab of this visit, the provider is able to see which exceptions have been triggered on the visit. However, without the provider being able to edit information on the visit in the aggregator, which they will not be able to do, there wouldn't be any way to resolve these exceptions. And this is why it's important for each alternate EDV system to have programs these exceptions or uh, some display that information is missing for a provider into their own system. Um, to notify them that information is missing because it cannot be edited in the SAN data system. Now that exception code listing document that was referenced just a moment ago uh, actually displays what's currently displayed on this slide. So it does display all of the exceptions 
that are expected to be programmed into an alternate EBV system for a provider to see. Uh, and whether or not that exception must be fixed or is an acknowledged exception. So where you see the setting as fixed, it means that that is an actual missing data element and that data element must be added to that visit. For instance, if you look at the first exception code that says unknown client, there is a specific code assigned to that exception, so zero would be the code. Uh, parameter is not applicable because the setting is fixed, which means if the client is unknown on the visit, the client must be added to that visit in order for that exception to be fixed. It must be fixed. If you look at the exception code that says exception code 28, or in other words, visit verification exception, you'll notice that the setting for this is acknowledged. So this is an exception that would be triggered or is expected to be triggered if there is no visit verification captured on the visit with the exception of DODD services, all right? So the except DODD services notation here means that this is not an exception that would need to be triggered on a visit that has a DODD service on it. But in order to fix this exception, a provider must be able to just acknowledge that no verification was captured. Um, you can't go back and retrospect and capture verification so the fixed setting or the setting for this would be acknowledge rather than adding data to the visit. Now the reason code listing that we mentioned earlier would actually show the information that is displayed on this slide. Each reason code is assigned a numeric value and the code is listed in that reason code listing. There is a description, a set description that must be assigned to that reason code. And under the additional information required column, uh, a Y or N would indicate yes or no whether or not additional information must accompany that reason code. The only two that are currently set with a Y for yes are individual unable to verify, and that's because there's a required note on that reason code for additional explanation from the provider. And group visit, which has a Y of yes, um, which is expected to have a uh, group visit code accompanying that reason code and or any additional text from the provider. Those are just a few examples and some additional information on how that reason code listing would be read. Now there's additional key information that is available on the alternate system tab of the ODM EDD webpage. And that includes a link to the alternate system aggregator training. So this is a link for providers to actually take training on the SAN data aggregator, uh, or rather anybody interested in how the SAN data aggregator works and is used would click this link and take training. It is a self-paced training, but it is also a requirement for any provider going through alternate EDV certification to take training on the SAN data aggregator. And this is because the SAN data aggregator is the system that ODM would be looking at for that provider's EDV data and information. And uh, so it's important for a provider to know how to log into the aggregator and use it so that they can have the same view of their data that ODM would have. Additional key information on the alternate system tab include the actual uh, outline of the alternate EDV system certification process. So all providers who want to use an alternate EDV system must have their alternate EDV system certified or approved. And this is a link to a graphical representation of step-by-step -step of that process. So it gives you a nice overview of the steps that must be completed in order for an alternate system and provider to be certified. So speaking of that process, what is the process? We're going to go ahead and go through that now. This is that graphical representation that I mentioned a moment ago that is posted to the ODM EDV webpage. And it walks the provider or vendor through all of the steps that need to be completed in order for certification to be achieved. So there are nine steps, 10 total, um, including the EDV demonstration requirements. Uh, that is effective as of October 21st. The unique thing about that demonstration step is that it technically can occur 
Um, anywhere between a provider taking the SAN data aggregator training and a provider being ready to request their production credentials. Uh, so even if testing is ongoing with an alternate vendor, um, even if SAN data is working to validate testing, the provider can reach out to schedule that demonstration anywhere between steps four and seven. We are going to go ahead and go through each of these steps now and so I can give additional details and information on what's included in each step. So starting with step one, the provider would make the request to start the alternate EBV certification process and the request must come directly from the provider themselves. And the way that they would do this is by reaching out to the alternate EBV certification support team. And they would just simply say, I would like to request um, to start or I'm expressing an interest, I would like to use an alternate EBV system. Something along those lines with that verbiage, just making it clear that it is an alternate EBV system they would like to use and they would like to start the certification process. It is recommended to go ahead and submit that request through an email because it is a lot uh, easier to write down additional information that would be applicable. For instance, it's important to know what vendor uh, you are interested in, who the contact is going to be at the agency to work through the certification process and what their information is, and it's also important to include the contact information for the vendor themselves. Now this is another change to the EDD certification process uh, that is key to review in today's webinar, and that is that effective as of October 21st, 2019, so as of yesterday, providers have a new email box to contact for alternate EDD certification support requests specifically. Uh, and this includes certification initiation. That new email box is ohaltebb.sandata.com, or in other words, Ohio abbreviation, alternate EDD at sandata.com. In addition to this, effective yesterday, October 21st, 2019, Providers will call a new phone number to speak to an agent regarding alternate EDV certification requests specifically. And that phone number is different than the 24-7 EDV provider hotline, which typically handles any and all requests regarding EDV. Um, and those are specific more to the SAN data system. So this phone number, which is 844-289-4246, is to speak to support team members specifically regarding alt EDV. Now, because that email box and that phone number go to a more dedicated support team to supporting the alternate EDV certification process, uh, support of certification through this email box and phone number will be available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m., 6 p.m. Eastern. It's also good to note that communications, or tickets rather, that are initiated through an email to this email address are going to be handled through a different ticketing system than providers or vendors may have previously been familiar with. So instead of going through eTrack, communications are going to be handled with alternate EDV certification tickets through a system called Zendesk. And you are going to see here in a little bit uh, what the differences are and what communication looks like coming from Zendesk. Now this is information that I mentioned a moment ago, but it is good to have written out here on the slide. And it's good to note that the slides from today's presentation will also be available on the EDD webpage under that alternate system tab. So you can refer back to this if needed. Uh, but this is the information I mentioned a moment ago would be helpful to include on your written request by email to that email box. And if, if you do happen to miss one of these data elements or if a provider forgets to include it, uh, the alternate EDD certification support team will respond back and ask for the additional information. So if you've forgotten to include a vendor contact information, it will be requested. Once you have submitted your interest in using an alternate EDD system and going through certification, uh, the provider will be contacted back by that alternate EDD certification support team to confirm their request. So you will receive a confirmation that the request has been received. And it will also include, that response email will also include information and steps on what's next. And that would be step two. The provider would retrieve alternate EDD system information. 
Any provider or any vendor for that matter can access the phase two alternate EDV documents through the ODM EDV webpage uh, and the alternate system tab specifically. And that direct link is listed on this slide. Um, you may also access the documents through links that are going to be included in the confirmation response that you receive from the alternate EDV certification support team. So previously, certification documents or information for a provider and vendor to be aware of uh, were posted in the eTrack web portal for a provider to go in and pull down. Now there will be links directly to the ODM EDV webpage documents in the response email that you receive back from the Alt EDV certification support team. So you may access that information through either location. Key thing to keep in mind is that the provider will be receiving this information unless or until they grant access or grant permission, rather, to the San data team to copy a vendor on all responses. So it would be helpful to go ahead and say in that initial email or respond back to the confirmation email you get from the alternate EDV support team that yes, you as a provider consent to giving your vendor permission to be copied on all communication with SAN data. And that way both vendor and provider can remain in the loop. Uh, and the vendor can even contact SAN data on the agency's behalf as long as they give uh, SAN data permission to correspond directly with the vendor. And in the response that you get back from the SAN data team, if you have not already done so, it will ask you if you give consent or permission to correspond directly with a vendor. And so the agency would just need to respond and say, yes, I give my permission for you to correspond with my vendor. Now, one question that may come up here is how would SAN data know um, whether or not somebody is from an agency because using eTrack previously for alternate EDV certification support and communication, uh, an agency representative must have registered in the eTrack portal, which proves that they have the four to pin from their agency, they know the provider Medicaid ID number, and they can get logged into the eTrack portal. When an agency team member reaches out to the email box that I mentioned a moment ago to express their interest in, interest in alternate EDV. The SAN data support team will reach back out to that agency member, ask them to confirm information that's on file with ODM about that agency, and they may even give the agency a call just to confirm that uh, somebody from that agency did in fact reach out to us. Uh, so that are, those are the methods that we plan to execute just to ensure that uh, it is in fact the agency who wishes to initiate that alternate EDV process. Now, step three, the provider works to review all documentation. The provider and vendor must review all the required documents on that alternate system tab. And again, just for review and reference, those documents include the business requirements, technical specifications, reason code listing, exception code listing, and required data elements documents. There are five documents total. If there are any questions that arise as you are reviewing all but the business requirements documents, you may reach out to the alternate EDD certification support team for clarification. If you do have questions as a provider or vendor about the business requirements document, we just ask that you would reach out to the EDD team at ODM, and that is EDD at Medicaid.ohio.gov, as those are more program specific than technical. Uh, specific question. The next step is step four. Provider takes all EDV training on the SAN data aggregator. The provider is responsible for taking training on the SAN data aggregator, and this would be completed through the learning management system, or in other words, known as LMS. And the link to that training is currently posted on this slide. It is also available on the ODM EDD webpage under the alternate system tab. The provider is also responsible for retrieving their completed training certificate once that aggregator training has been completed and sending that to the ALT EDD certification support team to verify that they have taken training. So that will 
meet the requirement for step four and allow them to move on to the next step, which is step five, the provider would request testing credentials. If the provider requests testing credentials, but they do not have that aggregator training completed, they will be asked to please complete that training before they request their credentials. And you may notice on the slide here that once we've gotten to this point, the provider requesting testing credentials, or at least the aggregator training being completed, now is also where the provider may reach out to their vendor and start discussing dates that would be good for that on-site EDD demonstration with ODM. And you can submit your request to schedule a demo to ODM. So as soon as you complete the training or a provider completes aggregator training, they may start on that demonstration requirement. If the vendor and the provider choose to wait until testing is successful to schedule the demonstration requirement, they may do so, but that demonstration must be successfully completed with the Ohio Department of Medicaid before production credentials can be requested from Sandata. So here in step five, when it comes to requesting testing credentials, and this would be when an alternate EDD system or vendor is ready and the provider is ready and aggregator training has been completed, it is still the provider who must request testing credentials from the alternate EDD certification support team. They may copy their vendor, that's no problem, but the provider is still the one who must make the request and continue to drive the certification process. For quality assurance, Sandata does test all credentials before they are sent to providers or systems to be used. Uh, so that is a quality step that we take just to ensure that uh, those credentials are valid and accurate and should not cause an issue. Testing credentials will be provided directly through, and this is something I need to correct on this slide, they used to be provided through the eTrack portal, but now they're actually going to be emailed directly back to the provider and vendor, if the vendor is copied on that email. Uh, and there will be a link to click on, and this is actually also listed on this slide. So the provider will be notified by the alternate EDD certification support team, both through phone and email, and the email will come from Zendesk or sent through Zendesk when those testing credentials are available. So they will be sent in email. And when I say email, they are going to be included in a link that is included in the email that you receive back. And that link will give you access to a system called Send Safely, or it's an additional application called Send Safely. So this is just an additional security step just to make sure that those testing credentials are going to who they should be going to. What is currently up on the slide is an example of an email that you would receive back from our alt EDD certification support team from Zendesk. Uh, the important things to note, if you look in the upper left-hand corner of this email, if you've never received an email from Zendesk before, it's not going to say that it's coming from Zendesk. Rather, it's going to say that it's coming from the actual support agent who is, happens to be sending you that response and it will have support in parentheses, so you know that it is coming from the support team, and it's going to have the email address of our alternate EDD certification support team, so that Ohio Alt EDD at sandata.com address. We will be able to CC uh, a provider's vendor as long as the provider gives us permission to do so. so you'll notice under the CC line, it says vendor at test.com to indicate that that is um, available and what will happen. And then you'll notice the subject line here. The subject line does not indicate uh, Zendesk either. Rather, it is the subject that the alternate EDD certification support team wishes to convey to the provider. So in this example, where testing credentials are being issued, the subject is Ohio Alt EDD, two-week watch, provider test files for validation. Now, the reason why it says two-week watch, because when testing credentials are issued, to providers and or their vendors, uh, our support team does start this, um, it's not a clock, but it's a watch behind the scenes just to uh, see and make sure that there are testing files coming in from a vendor. If not, after two weeks, they'll reach out with a friendly reminder, say, hey, it's been 14 days or 15 days or around that two week mark, however many days, we have not yet re received any test files for validation. Uh, this is just a friendly reminder, and if you have any, please be sure to let us know. 
The second item that's called out in the red box on this screen is one that is specific to something that would come from Zendesk, and it is where you would identify your ticket number. So ticket numbers in Zendesk are shorter than they were in eTrack. Uh, and you'll notice through that second red box, it says you are a follower on this request. And in this example, it's 56071. Reply to this email to add an internal note to the request. So your ticket number is going to be listed at the top of that email underneath the SAN data logo. And it is what will appear in parentheses. And this note will be in every response that you get from support. But for any provider who's unfamiliar with Zendesk and how to communicate, hopefully it will be a quick uh, indication that, hey, if you need to respond back, just go ahead and respond to the email. And their communication will be added to the ticket and support will see it and be able to respond. Now the final red box on this screen is calling out what you will see when your testing credentials are provided. So in the red box it says your requested alternate EBV testing credentials are now available. You can access credentials by clicking this link. And so providers would actually click the link that's available in the email and it would take them to the Send Safely page, which I'm going to show you in a moment. But before we move forward, I want to point out the next line in that called out red box. It says, please note that only the original recipients can access the link provided. If you have not authorized us to include your vendor, you will need to download and share these credentials with your vendor. So unless a vendor has been um, given permission by their provider to correspond directly with SAN data, only the provider will be listed in Zendesk as a valid recipient of these credentials. And anybody else who tries to access this link would not be able to. So that is a key line in this response to pay attention to. But if a vendor has been given permission, they'll be CC'd on this email, they would be able to click that link and access the testing credentials. Clicking on that link would take you to the Send Safely login page. And that is what's appearing at the top of this screen. It'll say SAN data secure data transfer system. You would enter in your email address, and as long as it is a recognized email address that has been added to Zendesk, uh, you would be able to get into the page and download your testing credentials. And that's what's displayed on the bottom half of this slide. Now, once credentials have been received, step six is what comes next. And this is the provider working with SAN data and their vendor to conduct testing. And sometimes it's the vendor working directly with SAN data if the provider has given uh, them permission to do so. Now here, it's key to note that a vendor must conduct testing for every agency who wants to use them as an alternate EDV system. Or in other words, another way to put this is they must conduct testing for each individual Medicaid provider ID. While a vendor may leave the testing and work directly with SAN data, they must copy their provider on all communication. Uh, so the provider can stay in the loop on how testing is going, but also so that they can continue to know and be the driver of their alternate EDV certification process. The provider or vendor must notify SAN data when test files have been sent. So unfortunately, SAN data does not get an automatic alert or response when they receive test files from a vendor. Uh, so this is why the testing checklist that is included, also included in that email response I showed a moment ago when testing credentials are issued, is so helpful to complete and send through whenever you need test files uh, validated. Uh, this is because the UUID of that file, or in other words, the ID that helps SAN data locate that file to validate the information in it, is required in the testing checklist. And once received, the alternate EBV certification support team will follow up with the provider if they do not notify um, SAN data of available test files within 14 days. This is what I mentioned a moment ago. But once we receive UUIDs of test files that a provider or vendor wants to validate, SAN data will work to validate those files and get a response back to providers as quickly as possible. And if there are errors in testing, the provider must work with SAN data and or their vendor to resolve. Now I mentioned that testing uh, checklist 
that would need to be completed and sent back to SAN data and completely validated before production credentials could be requested. This is an example of what that testing checklist looks like. Uh, so you have on the left hand side, um, you're actually looking at the Ohio Alternate EDB interface testing process, which is issued to providers when they first express their interest in using an alternate vendor. There are testing scenarios that are included in that testing process document. The testing checklist is just in an Excel spreadsheet and one that you can actually check yes or no and add information to, but it takes those testing scenarios and puts it in a checklist so it makes it easier to not miss one and to make sure that your system can comply with all of the technical specifications and requirements of certification. You must complete all applicable uh, tests in that checklist in order for the checklist to be considered complete. And the reason why I say applicable is because alternate EDD vendors who are only creating a system to work with DODD providers do not have to send test scenarios through for functionalities that they're not required to maintain. For instance, capturing verification from individuals. All right, that brings us to step seven. Once a provider and vendor have completed a successful demonstration with ODM and they have submitted a testing checklist to Sandata that has passed validation, they would be eligible to request their go-live um, production credentials. So they would identify their go-live and send that go-live date through to Sandata with their production request. And again, it is the provider who must request these production credentials, and they must determine when they intend to go live with sending data uh, to the SAN data aggregator from the alternate EDD vendor. The alternate EDD certification support team is going to send an email confirming successful validation of the test file and asking the provider to send in writing their intended go live date. And the reason why they request this date and request it in writing uh, is it it gives the provider an opportunity to really consider when they would be ready to transition from SAN data if they're already using it over to an alternate EBD vendor. And the reason why is because as of that go live date, the SAN data uh, telephony lines will be disconnected. The um, SAN data mobile connect or the MDB accounts for employees using SAN data will be inactivated. And it is going to be a full switch over from SAN data to that alternate vendor. Um, so you just want to make sure providers are able to think through what it would take to be prepared for that and uh, give the date where they will be prepared. Production credentials will not be issued until that go live date is established. The provider will be notified via phone and email when production credentials are available and they, they're going to be sent via email using that send safely link that you saw a moment ago. And the provider will use the provided link to then log into Send Safely and retrieve their production credentials. And as long as the vendor is CC'd on that email and that is given permission to do so, the vendor would have access to those production credentials as well. Now there is a final step here before certification will be noted as complete and sent to ODM as complete. And it is step eight. It is one of the most important steps. Before a provider can be considered certified, after they go live, they must log into the SAN data aggregator, look at the data that is showing up from their alternate EDB system, and then send a written confirmation to the alternate EDB certification support team that the data is correct. Because if they've gone live and the information is not showing up in the SAN data aggregator, or it's not showing up as, it's, as expected, um, then that provider, you know, could be seeing edits back on their claims that they submit for EDB services and um, perhaps not as they should be showing up. So you just want to make sure the data is flowing as intended before you are considered certified. So a provider must send that confirmation through after checking the SAN data aggregator. And then upon receiving confirmation that the data in the aggregator at, is as the provider expects it to be, and this is just uh, details breaking out what I just mentioned. Now again, once production credentials are issued, SAN data will, um, as a service, start a watch 
for that confirmation email from providers. If we don't hear from providers within 14 days of their go live, we'll send a friendly reminder saying, hey, you've been live for 14 days. We have not yet received confirmation that your data is accurate and as you expect it to be. Uh, please reach out if you have any issues or questions, but also let us know that your data is as you expect. That's the final step before uh, certification can be completed. But once we receive that, SAN data will notify ODM of the provider and the system or alternate EBV systems certification. So the provider and or vendor will only be considered certified after live data has been confirmed. And once that confirmation has been communicated to the alternate EBV certification support team. Uh, SAN data does send an updated list of certified providers and vendors to ODM on a weekly basis. It's typically on Mondays. Uh, so if you do confirm your data in the aggregator on a Thursday, for instance, you'd be sent through in the, the next updated list of certified providers or vendors as of the following uh, Monday. But the EBV team at ODM can also request um, an updated list at any time. That's just a regular update that gets sent by email. Now, if you are wondering at this point, who do I contact if I have questions or issues, you would reach out to that Ohio Alt EDD at sandata.com address to express interest in using an alternate EDD system if you're a provider, or to work through the alternate EDD certification process if you're a provider or a vendor. And if you are uh, emailing the alternate EBV certification support team for the first time, even if you've been working through your certification so far, it is very helpful to please include your first and last name and your role in your organization, your agency's name, and your agency's provider Medicaid ID. If you prefer to contact the alternate EBV certification support team to ask questions or work through concerns by phone, the new phone number is listed on the slide. It's 844-289-4246. And if you have any questions or issues that you don't feel have been addressed by the alternate EBV certification support team, or if you need to schedule your alternate EBV demonstration, or if you have program questions, this one is not on the slide, but it's also important to note, please reach out to the ODM EBV team. And the email for that is EBV at Medicaid.Ohio.gov. Okay, at this time, we are going to take a look at the Q&A box for any questions that have come in throughout the webinar. If you have a question and you have not yet had an opportunity to type it into that Q&A box, now is a good time. We're going to read through some of these, and then we're going to end up answering all of them live over the phone. But we're going to take a moment to read through them first. Our first question here is in regards to uh, DODD providers who may wish to use an alternate EBV system. Uh, the two questions are very similar. The first one is, I thought they did away with requirements for signatures for DODD. Yes, DODD providers, or in other words, correct, DODD providers are not required to capture visit verification from clients when services are, DODD services are being provided. Um, so to answer the second question here, Signatures and voice verification are not required when it is DODD service being provided. So you do not have to capture that. You are also not required to send it through an alternate EBD system when it's a DODD service.
Uh, the next question here is SAN data required to capture GPS coordinates at the beginning and end of the visit as well? The answer to that is yes. It is actually an EVV rule requirement for the Ohio Department of Medicaid that all vendors, and this includes Sandata, capture or have the ability to capture GPS coordinates at the start and end of a visit. The next question is, have vendors who submitted info without data con collection functionality been notified of this? Have agencies affiliated with them been notified? Um, there are a variety of circumstances captured there. In at least one instance, a vendor was certified but never felt the data collection um, capability, and so they themselves notified their clients that they were in fact not going to be able to offer a solution. In other circumstances, when we have identified a problem, such as um, not capturing social security numbers, we do notify the vendor and provider as appropriate. Each circumstance is looked at um, individually so that we can assess the specific issue and the best way to handle it. Um, do you have a current list of certified alternate vendors? If you would like a current list of certified alternate vendors, please go ahead and contact the EVV mailbox and I will type the address in in response to your question. It is EVV at Medicaid.Ohio.gov. We will provide that list upon request. Um, the next question is, will alternate vendors need to demonstrate the product for each of their providers or will completing the demo once be sufficient? Um, alternate vendors need to demonstrate their product at least once um, and then for other providers they can complete part two of the request to schedule a demonstration form which um, is where both the provider and the vendor attest to a prior successful demonstration. If a vendor has multiple platforms or ways they provide that alternate system solution to providers, e.g. housed on their own server versus the provider server or a DODD only version and a version that handles other provider types, then they would that have to demonstrate each version once. Sure. Um, the, the next question is, if we have specific questions regarding items on the checklist before the meeting, who should we direct these questions to? You can send those questions to EVB at medicaid.ohio.gov. Um, the next question is, why do vendors have to demonstrate in person? This seems like an unnecessarily expensive requirement. Vendors are choosing to interact with the Ohio Medicaid program, and it's important to all be in one room during a demonstration so any questions can be answered so that we all understand each other 
and we can have um, a robust conversation as questions come up during the demonstration. I am both the vendor and the provider. Can I do the demo remotely and not travel to Columbus from Pennsylvania? Unfortunately, if the vent, because you're serving as your own vendor, you cannot um, complete the demonstration remotely. Well, vendors must attend in person. Providers, however, can choose to participate remotely. There's a, a question here. Where do you find the request to schedule demonstration form? That is on the ODM EDV webpage, specifically under the alternate system tab. So you can go to uh, medicaid.ohio.gov forward slash EDV. That's the shortened uh, web URL. And once you're there, click on the alternate system tab and you'll be able to um, click on and download that form. Another question here, in the event the alt EDV is not functioning after go live, is Sandata's TDV system available as a backup to alternate EDV? The short answer to that is no. Um, my guess is you would, a provider would find out that an alternate system is not working on the fly in an emergency situation. When a provider goes live with an alternate EDV system, they have switched over from fan data to that alternate EDV system, which means those telephony lines are no longer active and in place. If a provider decides to switch um, permanently or in the long term from an alternate EDV system back to fan data, it will initiate a process to set up those telephony lines again, but they cannot be used as an emergency backup situation. Um, the next two questions address the requirement that the vendor participate and provider participate in the demonstration. As we've said previously, the vendor must participate in person. The demonstrations will occur in the Ohio Department of Medicaid offices in Columbus, Ohio. Um, the address can be provided when you schedule a demonstration. Um, the provider can choose to participate remotely or attend in person. The next question, if a provider has already completed up to step nine, is a demonstration required? Yes, a demonstration is required for anyone who is currently in the process of getting certified or who has already been certified as an alt vendor. They would still need to come in and demonstrate their functionality.
Our next question, where can additional information be found on reason codes? Some of the reason codes are not clear. You will want to send your specific questions to evv at medicaid.ohio.gov and we can provide you with additional information. The next question here is with Passport, and that's an ODA service, what number are we entering as the insurance ID? We have been using the Medicaid number and or adding zeros to the Passport number provided by Passport and nothing is working. To work through your question and to take a look at the specific fields in examples that you have sent, please reach out to that Alt-EDV certification support team uh, you can do that through email or phone. Um, that is something where we really need to take a look at the specifications with you and take a look at examples that you have sent to be sure we're talking apples and apples in order to answer that question. So please feel free to reach out to support to work further through that. The next question is, can vendors use the Ohio Alt-EVV at sandata.com support email as well? The answer to that is yes, and there are two possible scenarios that come to mind with that. The first scenario is you have a question regarding, uh, you as, as a vendor would have a question regarding a specific provider. You may reach out to Sandata directly at that email address as long as you copy your provider. The second scenario is maybe a vendor has a more general question that impacts or could affect all of the agencies that they are working with uh, through certification or who have already been certified. In that case, a vendor can reach out to that email address uh, to work through a general issue directly with Sandata. Um, just please keep in mind, you to work through any issues, you could be asked for examples and, and be prepared to work through that. But yes, that is available to be used by vendors. The next question is, all EVV systems must have at least two alternate data collection methods besides the device with GPS. One is manual entry. What are other valid methods? We are deliberately not specific about what a second alternative might be because we're trying to give vendors and the providers they contract with the flexibility to determine an alternate method that works best for them. Obviously, telephony would be an alternate method. Um, other things we've seen throughout our research into EBV systems are things like a random number generator where the numbers link to a time, date, location, and individual. Um, but that's really something for the vendor and the provider to problem solve to determine what best meets their needs. Uh, another question here is, will both vendor and provider be copied on all correspondence from Sandata? The goal here is to not have information shared between Sandata and the vendor without also including the vendor. And the answer to that is yes. 
uh, as long as that correspondence is regarding that particular provider and their certification, SAN data will copy the vendor, will actually send to the provider with the vendor copied on all uh, communication there. Um, the only exception to this is the scenario I mentioned a moment ago where a vendor may have a general question that impacts their system and how it interacts with the aggregator outside of a specific provider. They can reach out to SAN data. In that instance, there is no specific provider to copy back on the communication. Um, but rest assured, anything involving a provider certification or uh, something expressed or brought up as an issue by that provider with their particular connection, that our vendor will be copied on all communication from SAN data. Um, the next question is about the demo, and it says if an agency uses their EMR to enter in things like social security number, employee email, client payer information, et cetera, do they need to demonstrate that entry via their EMR? If that is the way the information required by Medicaid is documented and for purposes of sending to the aggregator, the vendor would, and provider would need to demonstrate that. Is a vendor already who already has providers using our interface and having gone through all testing, are we no longer certified? Providers and vendors who have completed the certification process remain certified at this time. Vendors who have already completed the certification process and their, the providers they completed that process with must submit the request for to schedule a demo by November 15th, 2019. Um, that being said, um, if you've certified with multiple providers, you need to identify one that is going to schedule the demonstration, and then um, you'll be able to submit part two of the form subsequently to having completed that demonstration. Will providers have access to all of the nine steps here in writing, and if so, where to obtain? You can obtain um, a copy of this webinar on our website at EBD at Medicaid, uh, sorry, at www.medicaid.ohio.gov forward slash EBD and select the Alt Systems tab. The, this presentation should be posted by tomorrow afternoon, but most of their system requirements are already out there for you. Um, the target audience of the demonstration, the next question is who will be the target audience of the demonstration? Will San Data be able to see the software being demonstrated? The target audience is the ODM staff in the room, 
They are the decision makers regarding whether the system satisfies the demonstration requirement. Um, stand data will be in the room as a technical resource in the event there are questions, there will be a single stand data resource. And um, I would point out that we aren't really expecting you to demonstrate the inner workings of your solution, but only to show us that it worked. So for instance, if you type in how does social security number get in there, not all the things your system might do with that social security number, but if you enter it, it's there to be sent to the aggregator. Our next question is, if you switched an all EBV, can you switch back to SAN data? Absolutely, you are able to switch between SAN data and an ULT EBB system and back to SAN data as your business needs require. Uh, please just know that when you, or if you, I should say, if you do desire, let's say a provider wants to switch back from an alternate EBB system to SAN data, as mentioned earlier, there is a setup process that would need to be gone through again in order to use SAN data. Uh, so you would reach out to this same alternate EDV certification support, um, express your interest to switch from all EDV to SAN data and initiate that process. Um, I, I am an alt EBV vendor with 10 plus agencies. Do we do the demo with each agency? You do not, unless you really want to spend a lot of time with us. Um, you will submit the request to demo form with the, the provider you identify as the provider who's going to come in to demo with you or participate in the demo. Assuming that the other nine providers use the same um, model or version of the software, you will then work with those providers to complete part two of the request to schedule a demonstration form documenting that the system has previously successfully completed a demonstration. Alternate vendor that already has agency providers using our interface to scan data successfully, what are we supposed to do for this new demo process? You will want to re identify a provider to participate in a demonstration and submit the request to schedule a demo no later than November 15, 2019. After that, you will work with the remaining providers using your um, solution to complete and sign and submit the request to demo, schedule a demo with part two completed. That portion of the form is essentially an attestation that the system was previously demonstrated successfully. <laughs>
Um, the next question is, will Sandata have a telephony option after January 1st, or does that go away because it doesn't collect GPS coordinates? We do not have any plans to eliminate telephony as an alternative at this time. We um, capture the phone number in lieu of the GPS coordinates. What is expected for the new demo process? What should be shown? Um, screens, backend database, aggregator transactions, et cetera. We'll actually be want asking you to demonstrate the data entry or data collection in real time so that we can see that the system actually collects that data as it should. The specific items that we will be looking for during the demonstration are documented on the EVB checklist found on the ODM EBB webpage on the alternate system tab. The next two questions are from providers or vendors who have successfully completed the certification process. And they are wondering if they have to start the whole certification process over. In fact, a provider and vendor who are successfully certified do not have to start the, pro the process over. They simply need to complete the demonstration requirement. And again, they need to request a submit the request to schedule a demonstration by November 15, 2019. The next question mentions that the GPS is not being recorded accurately. Um, from the question, we can't really tell if that's someone using the SAN data system or an alternate system. Um, the alter if you're using an alternate system and you have concerns about how location is captured, we recommend that you talk to your vendor. If you have a question about the SAN data system, you can certainly call the SAN data help desk. But in addition, I would point out that we do not, uh, while we capture GPS coordinates, we do not generate exceptions. And um, so while it's important that we are capturing them and that they're as accurate as possible, we are aware that in some circumstances, they may not be 100% accurate.
Um, my vendor of choice does not offer actual digital signature functions. Can a picture capture of the signature be used as a substitute? Unfortunately, it cannot. The, um, a picture could be of a signature provided at any point in time. The requirement is to capture a signature for everything but DODD waiver services at the time the service is performed. Okay, at this time, we are at 4.05, which is uh, past our, our scheduled webinar time, and unfortunately, we are going to leave the room here. So, uh, if you have questions that we did not have the opportunity to answer, we got through as many as we could today, but if you have questions that were not answered, please reach out to the ODM EDV team at EDV at Medicaid.Ohio.gov. Thank you all for taking the time to join us today and have a great rest of your day.